Walsh Gymnasium on the campus of Seton Hall University in South Orange, New Jersey, the site of tonight's women's college basketball game on the Big East Digital Network as the Seton Hall Pirates host the Xavier Musketeers on the final weekend of the regular season. Welcome, everybody. I'm David Goss alongside Kana Adams for this one. And Kim, I said it, it's the final weekend of the year. And coming into this weekend, there's only one thing we know, that DePaul is locked in at first place, but there's everything else to play for. Right, only two games left for each of these teams, but so much uncertainty for Seton Hall. They're coming off of two losses. So not only are they playing for seeding, but they're playing just to get some confidence and some momentum back. They're currently in a three-way tie for fifth, trying to avoid that number seven spot, having to play on the first day of the tournament. And as for Xavier, they're in a three-way tie for eight. So still a little bit to play for there in terms of being in that 8-9 game instead of the 7-10 game. And for Xavier, it all comes down to Ariana Gray, their leading scorer. They're leading everything, our star player to watch tonight. She's been putting up monster numbers this season, David. And Biggie's play second in the conference in scoring, just under 19 points per game. Also second in rebounding, just about nine rebounds per game. So we will see her all over the floor tonight. She's athletic. She can get up and down. She can run. But she may meet her match <laughs> in Shadeen Samuels, who has a very similar scouting report. This is her final weekend. She'll play here at Walsh Gym, averaging 14 points per game, shooting a blistering 56% from the field. And coming off a, a big offensive explosion against St. John's last weekend, 19 points, 12 rebounds in the loss, but she's really the engine that's going to get this team to go and help open up things for her shooters on the perimeter. Clash of the Titans between those two. Will Seton Hall be able to rebound after a tough loss against St. John's last week, or can Xavier continue their momentum from their strongest weekend of the year? We've got it all coming up for you in just a moment here on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching Seton Hall Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're going to work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in. We coming back in this locker room, people, for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We're on it and we got to raise it up. David Goss and Kim Adams back with you here on the Big East Digital Network. The second to last game of the regular season in the Big East. It's going to be a good one. And Kim, let's start with the starting lineups for Xavier. It's been an interesting year. First year under head coach Melanie Moore and three underclassmen in the starting lineup here today. Right. We already mentioned Ariana Gray, who is the big time scorer, the big big time rebounder for this team. But they have some young pieces really coming along. The freshman Morgan Sharps has been shooting well from three. So we'll look to see if she can get hot. But this is a team that, that's athletic. They'll get up and run a little bit. So this is a, a team that Seton Hall can't underestimate because of their record. This is a Xavier team that's been in a lot of close games in conference play. And we mentioned it, struggling in conference play, only two wins, but one of them coming last week and then a tight loss as well against Creighton. And on the flip side for Seton Hall, heartbreaking loss, one point to their rival St. John's last Saturday. Now they got to come back and get a result here in this one. And they're missing a big time player in Maya Jackson. And Xavier is probably very happy to see that because it was Jackson who went off in the first meeting in Ohio. She's an Ohio native. She had 25 points and seven of nine from three in that game. So she is out for the second straight game with a concussion. Barbara Johnson back in the starting lineup after Jasmine Smith started last game more for defensive purposes. So Coach Bazella going with a trio of seniors in this starting lineup. We mentioned, mentioned that Melanie, Melanie Moore, her, her first, first year, year as head coach, coach at Xavier, a long time, time, time success, 
successful assistant coach, the Ivy League in the Big Ten, Sienna Hall of Famer. Now her chance to lead her first squad as the head coach. Yeah, I, uh, she was at Princeton when I was playing at Penn, and so many people have just said so many positive things about her. So obviously it's never easy coming in in your first year, but once she gets her recruits in and really is able to get the style of play that she wants to, which she talked about us really wanting to play up tempo, pressing the whole game. Um, but it, it, she's got some promising pieces in there for sure. Seton Hall in their home white jerseys, winning the tip here at Walsh Gymnasium for Shadeen Samuels. A long, successful career. These are the last two games she'll ever play at Walsh Gymnasium in Big East action. Barbara Johnson, another senior, getting a start here in this one as well. And of course, for Shadeen Samuels, playing under Coach Tony Bazella all four years of her career as Lauren Wasselson knocks down the early three from the corner. And there's a couple of three-point threats on this Musketeers team. She's one of them. Aaliyah Dunham can knock it down. And then the freshman Morgan Sharp. Seton Hall has to locate those three shooters. You can't leave them open. And it's so tough to guard those shooters when you know you're going to double, if not triple, team on Ariana Gray anytime she touches the basketball anywhere on the floor. Right. That is always the primary focus when you're playing this Xavier team. Gray, as we mentioned, 18.7 points per game. So there's a lot of focus on her in terms of are you doubling her? Where is the help coming from? But it's important to recognize who's helping more and who do you not want to leave. Morgan Sharp, the freshman out there on the floor as Gray gets her first shot away. Can't hit it. Now the Seton Hall freshman Lauren Park Lane. And the ball into the front court. She has been the starting point guard all season as Lewis misses the three. Elmore battles for the offensive rebound. Lewis sneaking in, gets fouled, can't finish it. Will go to the line for two. And Seton Hall, one of the top rebounding teams in the conference, especially on the offensive boards with Samuels and Elmore. So that has to be a big time focus for this Xavier team who doesn't have too much size. They've struggled on the boards a bit, so that has to be a huge focus, making contact, boxing out, and limiting the Pirates to just their first opportunity. Alexis Lewis hits both free throws. She led the team in scoring against St. John's last week, averaging over 12 points a game. Has really woken up, though. Came over the second half of this Big East season. Xavier breaks the press. Another open three-point look, an air ball there, and Towson with the rebound and the finish. You see Xavier starting off in a zone. They play a mix of both. Coach Bazella wasn't sure what he would see, but they are starting out in this 2-3 zone. Lewis steps into a jumper, and it rattles out. Rebounded by Gray. A good steady start here for Xavier. It took them over seven minutes to hit a field goal against Seton Hall the first time these two teams matched up in the second game of Big East play back in December. And offensive foul, a big call going against Ariana Gray. And a nice draw by Desiree Elmore. A big part of drawing a, a charge successfully is getting your position early. And she came over as the help defender, anticipated that drive, got her feet set outside of the arc. Elmore having a big junior year as that one rolls out. Elmore really carried Seton Hall early in the season when Shanine Samuels was hurt. Big East preseason player of the year. And Elmore has really elevated her game, getting in shape and being a key part of this team. Chance of defense go up. Another open look there, that one rattling away. A good confidence start for Wasselson. Turned over and off to the races is Dunham. Elmore trying to chase her down and Dunham able to finish in transition. Xavier has been aggressive defensively. You see Coach Moore right now telling them hands up. Hands up that time Dun Dunham was able to get into the passing lane. And this zone has really affected Seton Hall early on here. Shane Samuels gets called for the travel. Courtney Pranger 
freshman out of Minister, Ohio, will come on for a substitution of the game. But Coach Moore has to love the way her team has started here on the road. Right, and I think it's really started on the defensive end, and that was something she spoke to us about this week when they had a, a home win over Providence last weekend. She said she really thought it started on the defensive end and their commitment to getting stops, and we've seen that so far this evening. Gray trying to work through traffic. A wild hook shot won't fall. And a foul, and it looks like it'll go against Wazelson on the loose ball. Third team foul early on here against Xavier. Still no field goal in this game for the home team. Seton Hall right now struggling against this zone. Lewis fires from the corner. She's got all five points for the Hall. Lewis is their top three-point shooter, so she's somebody you have to locate at all times in that zone. That time just too easy, a little baseline cut to the corner, and nobody found her. And there was an aggressive post move there from Prenger. The travel called on the spin move. Xavier, as we said, coming off a strong weekend. As Coach Moore told us earlier this week, feeling comfortable, confident with the way this team's playing. Park Lane can't hit that shot. And we've seen it so far early on here. And Pranger getting down the floor quickly, stripped by Lewis. Coach Melanie Moore really applauded her team on, you know, there's no let up with this group when it comes to continuing to work hard at practice, continuing to show up every day, con continuing to compete. And that's not always easy to do when, when the wins aren't piling up. So this has a lot to say about the culture and foundation she's building. And another three-pointer here for the Musketeers. Alexia Alish coming in for Seton Hall in that last stoppage in place of Samuels. Big swing for Johnson, and she knocks down a three as these two teams start to heat up. Xavier quickly down the court, and another three here for Sharps. The sophomore, excuse me, the freshman's got back-to-back -back triples. Threes are flying right now, and that was a good sign for Seton Hall because Barbara Johnson has been in a bit of a, a shooting slump, averaging just four points per game over her last eight. So that is a big time three that could maybe get her going again. So these two teams finally starting to find their touch. We'll go to break. We'll be back in just a moment. Xavier leading on the road by five. You're watching Seton Hall basketball on the Big East Digital Network. I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Hartford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus. To the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. Time. 
When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Xavier Musketeers leading Seton Hall on the road here midway through the first quarter. The last time these two teams matched up, though, it was a battle of the freshmen as Morgan Sharps and Maya Jackson got it going from downtown. Right, we mentioned Maya Jackson was playing back towards home, 25 points, 7 of 9 from 3. She is unfortunately out today with a concussion, but something else that really stood out in that first meeting, Seton Hall forced 22 turnovers, and that led to 33 points off turnovers. Well, so far it's been a bit of the opposite here today, David, as Xavier has forced an early five turnovers for the Pirates. And Xavier breaks the press, an easy layup, and Sharps. Electric here to start this game. She's got eight points. Musketeers sticking with this 2-3 zone. You now see Shadeen Samuels working that middle. You really want to work the high-low with her and Elmore, one of them coming to the top of the key. Elmore on the baseline, and she throws it away. Gross in the game for the first time. She gets called for the charge. It'll be the fourth team foul here against Xavier. And that was the sixth Pirate turnover. And a lot of these turnovers like that one are just kind of mind-blowing because they're just throwing the ball away or throwing it into the hands of the opponent. It's not like they're, you know, live ball where they're running a fast break. These are just bad turnovers right now. Seton Hall, you had to assume you'd see a lot of zone with the way you have the ability to break teams down and one-on-one -on -one score. And they've seen flabbergasted so far, Kim, with what they've seen from Xavier. And Seton Hall's a streaky shooting team. At times, they've been really hot from three, so that's going to be tested today. But you have to work in and out of the zone, work inside, kick it back out to get better looks from three and get that zone to open up. Seton Hall looking to bring in Jasmine Smith, the junior out of Houston, Texas. Sharps, right now her eight points equaling Seton Hall's total production as a team. Gray without a basket, but Sharps leading the way. That one goes up over the backboard. If you're, if you're Coach Melanie Moore, in that stoppage, you're leading on the road. You have a young team, a team that's learning. What's the message, what's the focus here to close out this first quarter? You have to keep that momentum alive. You have to stay sharp defensively. I think the one of the keys to becoming a better team is closing out quarters and halves well. So we'll see if they can stick with their defensive execution and continue working the ball for good looks. Elmore gets her first bucket on the low post. Gray holding up there. Dunham trying to take Park Lane off the dribble. Hands it off. Prager almost turns it over. And Sharps again, and that one halfway down. And this here is going to be the fifth team foul on Xavier. So Seton Hall struggling offensively, Kim. And now you're giving them a free opportunity off a loose ball to get easy points. Elmore to go to the line. Elmore, 75% free throw shooter. She hits the first. Elmore, a transfer out of Syracuse from Hartford, Connecticut. Like five-star recruit out of high school. She knocks those two down and will take a seat in place of Femi Funis. Funis still slowly working her way back from a knee injury. And Wazelson will come on in place of Morgan Sharps, who has started this game in some serious form here, Kim. Knocking down eight early points. And the, the Seton Hall defense has, has quite simply lost her. And we mentioned a couple players you cannot lose at Sharps is one of them leading the team in made three-pointers this season. So Sharps, the leading scorer in this game on the bench. Ariana Gray, the leading scorer this season for Xavier on the bench. An opportunity for these young players to 
figure it out on the fly here for Coach Moore. Twenty on the shot clock. Dunham has to get it in. She finally does to Wazelson. Pressure from Lewis. Wazelson able to save it. Back into the hands of Wazelson, who steps in, gets fouled, and will go to the line here for two. And that's a frustrating foul call for the Pirates because I was just going to applaud them that their defense has finally started to show a little bit more intensity. They're reacting quicker. They're closing out quicker. And then you get a silly foul from behind on the jump shooter. That one you just want to let, let go. Lewis, a senior as well. Should know a little bit better in a scenario like that. Yeah, she knew it too. You could tell that's a, oh, coach is, coach is going to bring <laughs> that one up in the next huddle for sure. Wazelson hits one of two. So a four-point lead for Xavier. They've led the entire game. And they continue to stick with this zone, which has worked well. They've got high hands. They're energetic. And now a seventh turnover for Seton Hall. Smith trying to force that one into Lewis. Xavier. They draw another foul. It'll be the third team foul. First on Shadeen Samuels. Hall only averages 14 turnovers per game. They already have, they're already halfway to that mark and we're not even at the end of the first quarter yet. And this is a Pirates team that thought they'd lead in that category in a matchup like this and could push them to victory. They're gonna have to rework the blueprint a little here at the end of the quarter. They're gonna have to stay within touching distance as well. Shot clock at five now. The Musketeers have to go to work. Ross trapped in the corner by Samuels and turns it over. You just see a little bit of uncertainty there without their leader, Ariana Gray, even though she's a post player, things are just a little bit more fluid with her in the game. We'll see how long she stays on that bench. Smith, Park Lane, Samuels, Funis, and Lewis. Trying to figure out the offense and another bad pass from Seton Hall. As Dunham got her hand to it. Dunham herself already two steals in this first quarter. And these are just bad decisions from Seton Hall. They're rushing passes. The players who are, who are on the receiving end need to get open better. They need to relocate. They need to meet the ball. Ross Dunham, Wazelson, Gross, and Towson. No seniors on the floor for the Musketeers as Smith steps into a jumper and gets fouled. Big mistake there from Carrie Gross. An opportunity for Seton Hall to cut this deficit to one and immediately Sharps and Gray check in for Xavier. And that was a better read offensively from the Pirates because there were basically nine players on the right side of the floor. They had overloaded that other side. They did a good job of passing opposite to Smith. Smith hits the back iron. Funis able to battle and get the offensive rebound. Lewis for three, and she can't hit it. It's an opportunity to get the momentum there for the home team. Not able to take advantage. Xavier, they've had a strong first half but they haven't hit a field goal in over three and a half minutes here to close out the first quarter. Gray feeds Towson on the roll, and she finishes through contact. That was a beautiful read from Gray, who did a good job of using the screen, drawing both defenders, and then a hard roll to the rim from Towson. Perfect placement on the pass. A four-second difference between the shot clock and game clock here. Pirates trailing by four. Smith into the hands of Park Lane, the freshman point guard. Trying to pull the strings. Now Smith gets into the lane, finishes off the glass. Dunham quickly into the front court, puts it up off the top of the backboard. End-to-end -end action here in the first quarter. The Xavier Musketeers 
looking for their first road Big East victory of the season, leading by two here at Walsh Gymnasium. We'll be back in just a moment with all your second half action. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power gun. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Seton Hall Pirates and Xavier Musketeers battling out here on Friday night Big East action on the Big East Digital Network. David Goss and Kim Adams with you. Kim, good lead early here for Xavier. Let's take a look at the all-time series history, though, and it's a positive one for the Musketeers. Of course, not in the Big East for very long, but last year they knocked Seton Hall off in both of their matchups. Right, we mentioned this year Seton Hall won at the Cintas Center, but very surprising last year that Xavier was able to come into this gym and get a win. Both of those games were close. You look at their last 10 meetings, seven of them have been pretty close, decided by 10 points or less. So these are two teams that have had some battles and looks like we are trending for another yep. one tonight through one. It has been a good first quarter of play between these two teams. Xavier's zone defense has really thrown the Seton Hall Pirates offense. Has kept them ahead on the road as Gray fires from three. The high arcing shot, smooth off the back iron. You gotta like that from your leading scorer. And normally Seton Hall would prefer that from Gray. She only shoots 27% from three on the season, but that was a pretty nice looking stroke for a post player. Smith down onto the baseline. Samuels passes out of it, under 10 to shoot for the Pirates. Park Lane drives, can't keep a handle, and it goes flying in the air, and Sharps picking up the eighth turnover of this early game for Seton Hall. That's just a shocking number for a team with a heavy senior presence to have eight careless turnovers. And Lauren Park Lane has been as solid as any freshman we've seen in this conference has taken over as the starting point guard from the first game when she stepped on campus. Surprising to see that turnover from the Wilmington, Delaware native. Well, Seton Hall is, is getting the ball where Xavier wants them to put it. Seton Hall is continuously throwing it to the short corner where Xavier continues to trap, and a lot of their turnovers have been trying to pass out of that short corner trap. So if I'm Seton Hall, I'm changing up my points of attack a little bit, trying to attack the middle of the key or the high post and avoiding that trap, which is a strong trap coming every time. This is an active Xavier zone as Gray goes one for two from the line. McKenna Hofschild coming off the bench for Seton Hall here in place of Park Lane. Elmore on that low post, getting trapped, trying to go to work. 
Almost turns it over. Johnson gets the three-point shot away. And Samuels can't get to the offensive rebound. And Dunham immediately the other way quickly. Sneaks it down low to Gray who goes up and finishes. Ariana Gray's got six points early in the second quarter. That was great hands from Gray because that was a rocket pass. I thought that was going into the banner behind the basket for a second, but Gray able to swipe that and nice control on the finish. And Seton Hall hits a big three-pointer to pull them within five. And then immediately forcing a turnover as the crowd's chance of defense. Johnson into the lane. A wild shot, doesn't even get rim. And a silly foul there on Desiree Elmore. A frustrating game here. Kim, one of the things that kind of keeps teams from going zone against Seton Hall is how good they are offensive rebounding. They've only got two offensive rebounds, though, so far in this game. And really, because they haven't been able to get too many shots, because they keep throwing the ball away. So they haven't even gotten too many good looks at the basket. And another reason why that is is because Xavier's playing very good transition defense, which was a huge issue for them in the last game. We mentioned 33 points off of turnovers for the Pirates in the first meeting. The only senior on this roster, Ashley Gomez, checking in for the first time for the Musketeers, as is Sarah Leyendecker. Redshirt sophomore of Lawrenceburg, Indiana. This is her first appearance in over a month for Xavier at six foot four. A big presence and a good addition here for Melanie Moore's team. Right, you can see the impact right away. She is by far the tallest player on the floor. We've mentioned some rebounding struggles. She averages about five rebounds per game. So great to see her back in the lineup. She hasn't played since January 26th, has been dealing with a lower leg injury. Sharps, a bright start to this game and she hits another big shot. The pull up three, Morgan Sharps is in the zone. Seton Hall was looking for a push off on that one. I thought there may have been a little bit of extension on the elbow of that step back. Lewis steps back and she knocks down the fadeaway jumper. Back and forth stuff between these two teams. Xavier trying to show how far they've come since the opening of Big East play. A first time head coach, a largely underclass roster. And they're putting on one of their best performances of the game. What a pass, what a catch, what a shot for Alexis Lewis and she will force Melanie Moore into a timeout. Seton Hall cuts the deficit to four they are working their way back here at home. We'll be back in just a moment with more basketball here on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching Xavier Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power. David Goss and Kim Adams from Walsh Gymnasium. Seton Hall Pirates hosting 
the Xavier Musketeers, and we are officially one day away from March. Madness is about to begin. Kim, and you can get your tickets for the Big East Women's Basketball Tournament. You can get all session ticket packages on sale at www.bigeast.com slash womensbasketball.tickets at the Wintrust Arena in Chicago starting March 6th to March 9th. You will be on the call for the opening round on the Big East Digital Network and then moving over to Fox Sports 2 and then Fox Sports 1. As we said in the open, DePaul's number one. Everything else is chaos right now in the standings. What are you looking at in this last weekend? Well, I think Marquette at the current two spot is is very interesting because this Marquette team was picked ninth yep. in the preseason. So first year head coach Megan Duffy has done big time things with that program. And then you've got this three-way tie for fifth between Creighton, St. John's, and Seton Hall. And that's important because one of those teams is likely going to end up as the number seven seed, meaning you have to play an extra game, you have to play on the first day of the tournament. So that is the biggest thing that a lot of coaches are dealing with right now is trying to stay in that top six. For Xavier, they will play on that first day. The question being who their opponent will be. There's a possibility if results go a certain way, it could come down to RPI as these teams this year are so close in the standings and a big shot there for Sarah Leyendecker. Returning from injury gets her first basket of the game. And you see her length there. That was a, a well defended drive but she was just had a couple inches on her defender and able to extend over the top of the defense. Lewis trying to hit another fade away from the block. That one rattles out. Ryan Decker dribbling down to the post. Now around the perimeter. Tend to shoot for the Musketeers. Dunham picks up her dribble, needs some help. Cross court for Gomez. Gomez steps past Lewis and can't hit the shot. Ryan Decker with the offensive rebound and it'll be a jump ball. It'll be the home team's possession. Kim, if you're Coach Bazella, the team hits a couple shots, you force. Coach Moore into a timeout. What was the message in that timeout? Well, I think the first thing is protect the ball. We mentioned the eight turnovers, which is very unlikely for this Seton Hall team. They need to be sharper in their passes, better with their decisions, and they could hit some more outside shots. The freshman, McKenna Hofschild, lighting it up off the bench. And Hofschild getting some run here in the second quarter, trying to help alleviate that turnover problem. Big shot there from Hofschild. Only her seventh three of the year. Gray, they're gonna go to work, gets by Samuels, and finishes over help. What a move. Sheesh, that was a tough move. Just a quick little shoulder drop, opposite side. We mentioned the two of those, two of them have very similar games, Samuels and Gray. Samuels answering right back on the offensive glass. And this is what we thought we would see. Two long, athletic, skilled, low post players that can score inside and out going up against each other. You see the help defense collapse on that one. Great team defense, which is what Coach Fazella talked to us about, needing to guard Gray as a team. And that time perfectly executed. Samuels leaving it there for Lewis. And Lewis cuts it to a one point deficit. And now you're starting to see the Pirates' energy raise up a little bit because of what they're doing on the defensive end, getting stops, getting rebounds, and carrying that over to the offensive end. Sharps has led this team in scoring here in this first half. Dunham with the pull-up jumper. Gets all backboard, and now Hofschild pushes it back the other way. Knocked away by Gray. And recovered by the Pirates. Hofschild trying to be aggressive in transition. A chance to step into that three. And Smith can't finish it. And it's knocked away by Xavier. So three minutes left to play in this first half. You talked in the first quarter about finishing quarters, proving for teams that are good. Xavier here losing a little bit of control. 
Yeah, well, they haven't gotten as many stops on the defensive end, and then they've gotten out of their offensive sets a little bit. So they want to make sure they're continuing to execute, run through the offense, make the extra passes. One of the things Coach Moore talked about was good shots not leading to easy transition possessions for Seton Hall as Lewis almost loses the ball and then is able to hit the free throw jumper. And Xavier will call another timeout here as Seton Hall takes their first lead of the game. 32 to 31 came in finally. The Pirates limiting the turnovers, getting it going on offense. Right, limiting the turnovers was the biggest issue. So now they're actually able to get some better shots. I think they're doing a better job of strategically attacking the zone. They've kept it out of that area where Xavier had been continuing to trap. And then they've really amped up their intensity defensively as well and have gotten back to that identity that we know them as, the team that really forces turnovers, gets out in passing lanes, and, and runs it back on the other end. So we're seeing a little bit of a slow start for Seed Hall, which we've seen at times. And that's been kind of their biggest issue this season, I think, is inconsistency, whether within games, whether from game to game. But at least Coach Vizella has got to be happy that they have found their way here before they hit the locker room for halftime. An interesting note here on this first half, Xavier dressed four less players for this game, but they've played one more player than Seton Hall. You didn't really expect them to be the team that works their depth in this game. Three substitutions coming in here for Xavier off that stoppage. And Towsend, Wazelson, as well as Deja Ross. And a turnover here. And it has now been two and a half minutes without a point for the Musketeers. Can Seton Hall stretch their lead late in this first half? Hofschild gets it into Samuels. Ullish not able to hit that shot, an offensive rebound. Lewis fires from three and can't find the bottom of the net. This is where Xavier needs to settle down now. They had a great start to the game. They've gotten away from what they were doing well. Just really get a good possession here, a good high quality shot. Wazelson gets into the lane and finishing with the left hand. And that'll work. And Coach Melanie Moore talked to us about the growth of Wazelson last year she was really just a set three-point shooter this year she's doing much more as we saw in that possession taking it off the dribble right to the rack beautiful offense for Seton Hall and they're able to retake the lead got a battle here Damn, David. we've got both a game teams have brought it on both ends we've seen both teams turn up the intensity on defense show a little bit of class on offense as well Wazelson can't get it to fall. Towson, monstrous offensive rebound, and she'll go to the line. And that's just a missed box out from Seton Hall. Three players were just caught watching the shot. Nobody found anybody. Nobody boxed out. And Ayanna Townsend skies in for that board. Towson going to the line. Has four points so far today. A career 50% free throw shooter. Missing the first one. Towson last year had a good start to her career, averaging five points, four and a half rebounds in the first seven games before she got injured and had to redshirt. Slowly working her way back into fitness this year. Samuels gets to her right hand, contact on the drive, and the foul will go against Deja Ross. Shadeen Samuels just has such an explosive first step, as we saw there. She could just catch you off guard and blow by you in a minute. And that's I'm doing a good job. She drew some help, but able to elevate over the defense and draw the contact. Last year's Big East scoring champion was the preseason Big East Player of the Year pick this year. Injured in non-conference play, returned against UConn. Took her a while to really find her touch again. Came into conference play and averaged about 11 points a game, way down from last year, and she slowly worked her way back. And this, if any, is the time you want to peak 
Right. And for the Pirates. She's definitely amped up her scoring in big games, but I also think she hasn't had to score as much this season as she did last year because they she has a lot of talent around her. Desiree Elmore, Alexis Lewis in her first and only year has really been a scoring threat from the perimeter. So there hasn't been as much pressure, but they do need her to step up in big time games. If, if there's been games where she's had seven or eight points and they're not winning those games. And in the Big East tournament, where you look at where Seton Hall sits, and you look at the other teams, every team ahead of them in the standings, they've got a player who can take over in a big game like that. Shadeen Samuels has to be that player. Absolutely, and she needs to know that. Her teammates know that she has to have that confidence to take over on both ends, defensively as well, when she needs to shut a player down. Four second difference between shot clock and game clock heading into halftime. Park Lane drives, three pointer from the corner. Off the rim, Lewis with the offensive rebound. The shot clock is off. Final 10 minutes of this first half. Xavier led almost the entire way. Seton Hall working their way back in. They turn it over again. Wazelson throws up a three and a foul. Lauren Park Lane called for the foul on Wazelson and she will go to the line for three free throws and a chance to take the lead heading into halftime. That's just... That's a shocking series of events that the Seton Hall coaches just can't believe it right now. They're gonna check to make sure that the foul occurred before the buzzer sounded, but not only do you turn it over, but it, you turn it over, you let the clock run out, you go to into halftime with a two point lead, but Lauren Park Lane, who we already applauded for making very good decisions this season as a, a freshman point guard, but to foul a three-point shooter about 40 feet out from the basket and give Xavier an opportunity to take the lead going into halftime if the officials do say it was ruled before the shot. We're not able to see the replays right now. We'll see. It looks like it was before. Wazelson is going to come out, and, and she's going to shoot three free throws. A huge moment here for... Xavier, they led most of this first half. They lost the lead late on here and a chance now. They can hit these free throws. It'll be .3 seconds left on the game clock to take the lead. Wazelson, she started this game with a three-point look and that really got Xavier going early on here on the road. Yeah, she had an aggressive start to the game, the defense lost her a couple of times. And that was a smart play right there just to get, get the shot up, get it off in time. And then drew the foul, which the Seton Hall coach is still there in disbelief on the bench. So Wazelson knocking down the free throws. A huge moment here on what could be a big night for the Xavier Musketeers leading at halftime trying to get a victory over Seton Hall here on the final weekend of the regular season. We'll be back with all your first half analysis here on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching Xavier Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power gonna I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Harford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus. To the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. Xavier Musketeers leading Seton Hall at halftime. We mentioned it. 
the Seton Hall Pirates nodded in a three-way tie for fifth place with St. John's as well as the Creighton Blue Jays. For more behind the scenes on the Blue Jays women's basketball team, let's take a look at this Big East digital feature. The entire recruitment with Creighton compared to other schools, it was just different. Like when you talk to other schools, they wanted to know like some facts about you, but it wasn't necessarily you as a person. Whereas Creighton, they took a genuine interest in who I was outside of basketball. And then I felt like their morals and values kind of lined up with what I was looking for. So it was really just perfect. The biggest thing that stood out to me during my recruitment at Creighton is the effort. They made it a point to really build a relationship with me and my parents. They were constantly in contact with me, asked me how my day was, really getting to know me as a person and not just a basketball player, and I think that makes the world of a difference. We think it's important to, to treat people the right way, to treat them well, to, to be demanding, but also to take care of them and let them know that we're here for them, we're, we're here to listen. Flynn understands that basketball is just a small part of life and there's a lot more to life than that. And I honestly think that that contributes to our success on the court because it takes some of the pressures off you and you kind of just are free to play and to grow and to know that it's not going to be perfect. We're also about more than just the athletic experience and the student experience. I think it's important that you give them an opportunity to experience as much of Creighton as is possible for a student athlete. So we probably monopolize their time a little bit less than some programs do and when we are on the road we let them do things that are cultural and educational. When you're not constantly at each other's necks in practice and you we get to go do fun things when we go on these trips so you get to learn a lot of, about each other. You know there's so many examples of kids that you would never put together as friends that become really really close friends that it, it shows you the importance of having those off-court encounters. Coming into college you don't you don't really know what to expect, but the culture here and the people here, you have 11 built-in best friends. And I can say for a fact that if I'm having a bad day, every single teammate would be able to just listen and give advice, whether you really need to hear it or not. The one thing that, that strikes me the longer I've been in coaching is just how, how great a job our players do at looking out for one another. Juniors and seniors are really mindful of the adversity maybe and the stumbling blocks that freshmen and sophomores are going to go through and I think they do a great job. The people here, the community here, the experience you have here, teammates, all of that, when you reflect back on it, it's well worth it. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. Voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do.
I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Harford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon, and I chose, I chose, I chose, I chose Xavier University for business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public, computer science, because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus, to the people, the sports. I came here to be a musketeer, and now, and now, I am, I am, I am, all for one. Welcome back to South Orange, New Jersey. David Goss and Kim Adams with you for this one. Let's take a look at the week that was, and it was a huge week for Villanova, knocking off both DePaul and Marquette, the first Big East team to do that double since 2015-16 in what has now become the hardest road trip of the year. Mary Gadeka, 19 points in those two games, helping lead Villanova up now to fourth place. And then Leilani Correa, who dominated this Seton Hall team that we're seeing here today for 32 points in the Cross River rivalry game at home, a one-point victory, and much of that came going up against Shadim Samuels head-to-head. -head. And you look at the Big East women's basketball honor roll, Ariana Gray, who we see here today on that list alongside Maddie Segris, who's part of those two big Villanova wins, Jalen Agnew, Kristen Spolar, and Chantel Stonewall. You see some seniors there. This is the time where seniors are really stepping it up, and those three are first-team All Big East candidates. And then Maddie Segrist having an incredible freshman campaign, tying Maya Moore with 10 Big East Rookie of the Week awards so far. And what does it all mean for these teams? It means this is where we sit in the standings, and there's still a lot to be decided in these two days. Kim, but right now Seton Hall sitting in seventh place, especially if they're not able to win this game, which would put them on playing on the first day. The only thing decided so far, DePaul clinching the number one spot, and it'll be at home in the Wintrust Arena. Still a lot to figure out. Just checked on some other scores. Butler winning at St. John's right now. So still so much up in the air, and, and that's the biggest thing right now is who is going to stay in that top six and who is going to drop to that seventh seed and have to play the extra day of the Big East tournament next week at Wintrust Arena. And it would mean you'd have to play four straight days if you were going to win that tournament. If you play on the first day and for Seton Hall, they probably saw their chances at an at-large bid go out the window with that loss last week against Seton Hall. So they need to get it done in the postseason tournament, which means they need to do everything they can to avoid that first round game. As you said, we'll keep you updated on the scores from the other games as well as the one here. A one point game, Xavier knocking down those three free throws to close out the first half. It's been a great one so far. We'll be back with first half highlights and second half action coming up here on the Big East Digital Network. We're all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go storm. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic.
from Chicago. Cleveland. Phoenix. Milwaukee. Hartford. Colorado. Oklahoma. Thailand. Norway. Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business. Chemical science. Occupational therapy. Philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus. To the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. David Goss and Kim Adams here from the campus of Seton Hall University, Big East Women's Basketball and the Big East Digital Network. An exciting first half, Kim, as we take a look at the first half highlights for Xavier coming in, sitting on the bottom of the standings. They came out, they hit a couple threes, they forced turnovers, they played really confident in that first quarter. Yeah, they had it going on both ends really started defensively. They forced 10 Seton Hall turnovers in that first half, many of those coming in the first quarter, but they really used that to fuel their offensive confidence. But Seton Hall, they settled in a little bit. They too have forced a bunch of turnovers, nine turnovers for Xavier in the first half, but both teams shooting very well. Xavier shooting 54% in that first half, Seton Hall shooting 48%. So both teams have done it on both ends, really. So now we'll see who can continue that momentum into the final 20 minutes. Who's going to execute better on both ends? It was Morgan Sharps to start the game, 11 points in that first half. But Ariana Gray, last week, Big East honorable mention, really turned it on as this game went along. You said it, 10 turnovers for Seton Hall, but it was 7-0 at one point in this game. Now 10-9, so a closer category and a big one for Xavier. Only 6-3 to three in offensive rebounds, which was a category we thought they might struggle in. Right, the rebounding is pretty even right now, which is a, another reason why Xavier is still in this ball game. And uh, for Seton Hall, it was Alexis Lewis who started to catch fire a little bit. She leads the Pirates with 13 points. But we mentioned the, the magnitude of this game for both teams. Seton Hall, A, trying to right the ship a little bit after two straight losses, trying to solidify a top six seed and for Xavier, this is a big time confidence game for them. A, a little bit of standings implications. They're locked into play in that first day, but will they be in the 7-10 game? Will they be in the 8-9? But more importantly, to get a, a road win, their first of the season and the last weekend of Big East play would certainly bode well, confidence and momentum wise, heading into Chicago next week. And a very real possibility that these two teams match up on the first day of Big East play. So. One of these teams will be going into that matchup with some confidence, and the other one will be looking for a little bit of revenge if that's the way this goes. A big first half for the Musketeers here on the road. Xavier tries to finish the first season in Melanie Moore's Big East head coaching career off on a high note this weekend. Xavier 1 and 10 on the road, an early turnover here. Park Lane, Alexis Lewis, Desiree Elmore, Jasmine Smith, and Shadeen Samuels on the floor to start this second half for the Pirates. Dunham alongside Wasselson, Sharps, Ariana Gray, and Ayanna Towsend for Xavier. Gray, zero points in the first quarter, eight points in the second, another turnover. Park Lane looking to push. Dunham reads the pass, and it comes back to Park Lane. An open three-point look for the freshman. She can't hit, and Dunham runs it down. One of the main keys for Tony Bazella's Seton Hall team was team defending Ariana Gray as they get a third consecutive steal on the other end. And they finally make it count. The Pirates with the first points of this second half. 
Three straight turnovers to start the half for Xavier. Wazelson, those three big free throws. Then the first half gave the Musketeers the lead. Gray now goes to work. Throws it up in traffic. Towson with an offensive rebound. Knocked away, but able to get it to Dunham. Dunham's three rims out, and now Samuels able to secure it for the Pirates. Smith quickly down on the block. Lewis cuts in, and she hits the mid-range jumper. Seton Halls has certainly answered the bell of a very animated Tony Bazella over there, clearly starting on the defensive end. They have collapsed early on Ariana Gray, and they've gotten that momentum to lead into their offense. Interesting, Alexis Lewis, the best three-point shooter on the team, has only hit one three. She's got 15 points, though. Kim, she's really gone to work inside this game. And she's a player who can really adjust. She looks like she got hit a little bit there, grimacing in pain a bit, but she could score anywhere on the floor. Lewis now, now she fires from three and can't hit it. She is one of seven from three. Courtney Pranger over to the scorer's table, ready to check in for Coach Moore's side. We saw Coach Moore call two quick timeouts in the second quarter as it travels called against Housen Kim. She seems to really understand the momentum on the road. Only one road win all year for her team, trying to control every single burst from Seton Hall. Well, now they, they're the team that's turning it over. They have four turnovers in the first three minutes of the third quarter. Seton Hall has just swarmed defensively and is collapsing when the ball goes inside. Seton Hall works it to the corner, now back out to Park Lane. Smith driving in. Lewis a driving kick, under 10 to shoot. Elmore elevates, can't finish over Gray, and a big rebound there for Wazelson. These two teams not ceding any ground in this game. Everything has had to be fought for every single inch. Gray now with 10 to shoot. She picks up her dribble, gets it to Prenger, goes off Prenger's leg, and it goes off a pirate, and it'll be Xavier basketball with four to shoot. So four seconds left on the shot clock here for Xavier as Carrie Gross comes on. Straight into the post for Prenger, back out for Wazelson, and she swishes the three. That was a nice set for Xavier, who only had a couple of seconds. They used Wazelson as the inbounder, and a quick tap back to her, nobody picked her up. And Lewis can't answer now, she's one of eight from behind the arc. Alexis Lewis. Shooting 32% from three on the year. The all-time leaders in Iona three-point shooting history before transferring to Seton Hall. Gross able to get rid of it. Pranger spins back into pressure and she will go to the line. Looks like the foul will go against Desiree Elmore. Excuse me, she needs Samuels. That's her third personal foul. That's a big one. We will see if Coach Vizella initially looks like he's not going to go to his bench. Going to trust his senior. Or maybe he'll let her play this next offensive possession and then get her out. Coach Vizella's only used nine so far in this game. It's going to be 10. Let's have Femi Funis in the front court on the bench as well as Alexia Ullish. Smith getting the start here out of halftime after a strong offensive performance off the bench in the first half. Lewis trying to hand it off to Elmore, turns it over. Dunham back the other way. Gross with the jumper a little too strong. Lewis gets it into transition quickly. Park Lane 
straight into the body of Dunham, can't hit the shot, but will go to the line. And that's what Seton Hall needs right now. They're struggling to score in the half court. They're 0 of their last five. They haven't scored in three minutes. That's when you want to do exactly what Park Lane did, get a steal or get a rebound and get out in transition. And interesting, Barbara Johnson coming on for Alexis Lewis here. So Shane Samuels with three personal fouls will stay in this game. Park Lane hits the first one and not only the Samuels have three, but Elmore has two. So that's the bulk of minutes in your front court sitting on the verge of foul trouble. And we'll see if Coach Vizella leaves her on gray right now or if he moves her to a player where she's not as and much of a threat of getting driven against, but Desiree Elmore just a monster on the offensive glass. Desiree Elmore having a huge junior year for the Pirates. Big play there for Elmore, averaging 13 points and seven rebounds a game. As Gray and Dunham go off here before the free throws. Sharp and Ross coming back on. So it makes Coach Bazzella's decision a little easier there. Elmore hits the first free throw. It has been back and forth in this game. Seton Hall struggling offensively for large stretches. They've still not hit a field goal in over three minutes, but those three free throws Get them back up by one at home. And a travel on Gross. And that was a smart use of the press by Coach Pizzella with their point guard, Aliyah Dunham, out of the game. Ariana Gray, who's even somebody who can handle it for them. He throws that press on. You've got a very young Musketeers team out here right now, and they turn it over right away. Into the lane. Beautiful high-low basketball, and Elmore with the layup to break the drought. And that should be automatic between those two. They should be able to get something out of that anytime. Samuels and Elmore high low, beautifully executed. Seton Hall trying to turn up their defense a little. A three point lead. Ariana Gray not on the court, the leading scorer for Xavier. Under five to shoot. Gross gets it away, can't hit the layup. And the Pirates go back the other way. Seton Hall extend this lead a little bit more. Samuels drives herself and draws the foul. There was the freshman Prenger trying to get there in time, and she wasn't able to, and Shadeen Samuels will go to the line. Seton Hall struggling at home. They've led for six minutes, but they are up by three, we'll be back with more basketball here on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching Senior Hall Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now.
a back and forth game here at Walsh Gymnasium between Seton Hall and Xavier. Seton Hall three point lead, their largest of the game in the final weekend of the regular season because this is what we have been building for all year. March 6th to 9th at the Winchester Arena in Chicago. DePaul hosting the Big East Women's Basketball Postseason Tournament. You can buy tickets now. Go to www.bigeast.com slash wbb.tickets. The first round tipping off at 11 a.m. on March 6th for two games on the Big East Digital Network with, of course, Kim Adams and then the quarterfinals, semifinals and finals over the next four days. It's March. 11 a.m. I'm going to have to be up <laughs> early. That is like the Did you just wait, find wait, that wait. out? Is that 11, 11 a.m. Central? Oh, my gosh. I'm going to... I'm going to be up early for, for that one. For everyone my out goodness. there, Kim, Ad Kim Adams is, re is putting in for a wake-up call Kim from Adams every Kim Adams is not a interview. morning person, and I'd rather have an 11 p.m. tip than an 11 a.m. tip. This I'm glad I've just learned this because I need to get mentally prepared. Kim, this is March. This is when <laughs> seniors need to bring it. You You're right. need to step up. Okay. Starting tomorrow. Well, actually, it's a leap year, so tomorrow is still February, yep. February 29th. Come Sunday, I'm going to be in full March mode. March, the most beautiful time of year. We've got postseason tournaments. We've got the NCAA tournament right around the corner. Big East looking at three, potentially four teams in the NCAA tournament this year. DePaul, of course, cruising, but Marquette. And right now, some experts have Creighton in. St. John's right on the bubble, and Seton Hall knocked off that bubble potentially last week, but there's still a couple big RPI wins out there for a team that can go on the run, on a run through the Big East tournament. The Pirates, a four-point lead. They're largest of the game here at home in the third quarter. Can they build on it? Johnson can't get the shot away. Under 10 to shoot for the home side. Elmore going to work against Towson, finishing through contact. Desiree Elmore is just a monster inside. Even before that look, I was just admiring her jab steps and how much force she had in that. But that was a good set. Oh, my God. And she just went real hard into the table. Oof. Right at the feet of Tony Bazella. Elmore on the floor for the second time here in a matter of minutes. Unfazed by it as well. Right on cue, talking about Toughness and intensity, that was a really hard dive right into the scores table, and she gets right back up. I think we've mentioned this before, and it might be easy because she played at Syracuse for a little, but you mentioned that jab step, her ability to score on the low post and shoot. She is the most Carmelo Anthony-like player I've ever seen in person. Right, she's got the smooth little release as well, that little kind of fade away, kick one foot up. Very, I, I like that comparison. Thank you, I appreciate that. So Kim, Three minutes left here in the third quarter. We are going to step aside one last time here in the third. A six-point lead now for the Pirates. We'll be back in just a moment on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching Xavier Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Hartford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus. To the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one.
back here in the third quarter. It is the final weekend of the regular season in Big East basketball, which means Sunday is the finale, a huge day of women's college basketball, starting off with Seton Hall hosting Butler and Villanova at Providence at 1 p.m. on the Big East Digital Network. And the national TV game is as good a game as you will get. DePaul facing off against Marquette in Milwaukee, 3 p.m. Eastern time on FS2 with Kim Adams on the call. I will be there. I'm headed to Milwaukee tomorrow. I already checked the weather. It's actually <laughs> warming up a little bit. I think there was a high in the 50s on Sunday. But that is quite an exciting way to cap off the season, with which will likely be number one versus number two going at it. We already know DePaul is crowned as regular season champion, but it's going to be exciting nonetheless. How do you like the way this Marquette group matches up against DePaul? I think they have the athleticism and size to defend them. I think first coach, first year head coach Megan Duffy has really gotten them to buy in on the defensive end. And I think they have scoring in a, a variety of different ways. They have some size down low. Selena Lott has really emerged as the takeover player on that team. But I think it'll be a good up and down battle, a lot of scoring, a lot of athleticism. Teams will be moving up and down the standings over the course of the afternoon. The potential existing that Providence and Xavier could be waiting for that night's RPI rankings to see who's 10th and who's 9th as Park Lane airballs the three-point attempt from the corner. Gray back on the floor with Dunham. Towson as well as Sharps and Gross. Barbara Johnson is fouled. David, that's just, that's not the look that Xavier wants right now. Coach Melanie Moore talked to us about in the first meeting, taking poor shots that lead to Seton Hall runouts. That was an early in the shot clock three off of one pass. It's, you're in this game, it's a four point game. This is where you really want to execute your offense. And you could get that look anytime, but can you get a better shot? Can you make a couple extra passes? and get a higher percentage look. That's what this Musketeers team needs to continue improving on. This is a Xavier team. Only two wins in conference play, but they've been in single digits in the fourth quarter four times over the last few weeks. So they have been in this situation. Have they learned from this situation? Exactly, this is, this is where you show it. Have we matured? Have we have we grown? Have we worked on late game situations and practices? But they're going against a Seton Hall team that's very veteran heavy with seniors in Lewis, Johnson, who's on the bench right now, Elmore, a junior. So they're going against a team that has a ton of experience with late game situations. Samuels hits both free throws. Shadeen Samuels slowly creeping up the double digit scoring in this game. And Xavier stay within touching distance to close out this third quarter. Towson barreling through Elmore. And the foul will go against Elmore. That will be her third personal foul. Ooh, I don't know about that one. We, we can't see the replay here this evening, but in, in fast motion, it looked like that was an elbow, it, not an intentional elbow, but it looked like an elbow got to the face of Elmore, who is one of the best in the conference at drawing charges. Close call there. Definitely has not been an easy game for these refs. A big call at the end of the first half on a half court heave. That ends up being three free throws for Lauren Wasselson. As Towson misses that one from the line. Towson 0 of 3 right now from the free throw line. So Shadeen Samuels and Desiree Elmore both sitting on three personal fouls. And it means Elmore will come out for the sophomore Femi Funis. Coach Bazella showed the confidence in Samuels to leave her in there for the last four minutes with those three personals. He can't take the risk with both his front court players. All right, she's been disciplined so far. And, and she sometimes too can be at, at risk for charges a little bit because of how 
quickly she drives the ball, but she has shown some restraint and has been able to stay out on the floor. Hofschild switching the court to Lewis. Funis back up to Hofschild. Five to shoot for Seton Hall. Samuels has to put it up from the corner. Back rim, knocked away, and then Dunham able to run down the rebound. Now we talked about Xavier growing, maturing, closing out quarters. This is an important last minute for them. We, we saw them get that nice swing of momentum at the end of the half with the three free throws. Can they get a good score on this end and then a stop on the other? Dunham out to Gray, an open three off the side of the rim and then Lewis fouled on the loose ball. It'll be, oh, it'll be the 15 foul on Xavier. So that means free throws coming here for Alexis Lewis. And again, it was another, another deep three for Xavier, for Ariana Gray, who shoots 27% from three coming into that game. That one I liked a little bit more because it, it came off of an offensive set. They got her open, but can you get something closer? Can you get something going downhill, attacking the rim in a two possession game? Xavier's gonna need someone to rely on down the stretch here for some tough baskets as Samuels tries to rip that one away. What a battle between her and Wasselson and it'll be Seton Hall ball. And Shadeen Samuels is as, as vicious on the offensive glass as anybody in the conference. That is one of the strongest assets of her game. And that's how she just went up and, ooh, she went after that ball. You can feel the elbows from here. Great battle on the boards, a great battle in this game between these two teams. They have gone back and forth, trading off leads. It's been Seton Hall, the stretch of this third quarter. Samuels puts it in and gets the foul. And David, what did, what did head coach Tony Bazella tell us before this game? He said, this is the point of the year where seniors need to win games for you. Xavier only has, has one senior on their team who's not on the floor right now. And Tony Bazella knows he has three that are playing significant minutes. Shadeen Samuels being one of them in her last weekend playing here at Walsh Gym, making a big time play. Samuels can't hit the free throw. An eight point lead. The largest of the game for Seton Hall. They trailed by one coming out of halftime. They forced three turnovers to start the quarter to take the lead. Xavier has worked their way back. A big shot here and Prangers fouled. So the freshman will go to the line here. Courtney Pranger. And that's the fourth on Samuels, who's debating with the ref a little bit. Tony Bazella is also going to ask for an explanation on that one. Samuels, who had been hanging on with three fouls for a while. Yeah, almost made it her six and a half minutes. There was about 22 seconds left to getting out of the quarter. So that is a huge question mark for Coach Bazella in the fourth quarter. How long can he afford to sit Samuels? And now he needs Elmore to stay out of foul trouble. Pranger hits one of two. Looking to get her own offensive rebound. And Park Lane comes away. The shot clock is off. If the Pirates choose to hold for the last shot. Under 10 now. Smith gets it down low to Funis. Funis in the lane for Elmore. Kicked out to Lewis. 4-3, halfway down and out. The Pirates close out the quarter with a seven point lead. Shadeen Samuels helping lead the way in her final weekend of Big East action at Walsh Gymnasium. We'll be back with a fourth quarter, a tight one here from Walsh Gymnasium.
My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. Back now from Walsh Gymnasium on the Big East Digital Network. David Goss and Kim Adams with you heading into a critical fourth quarter, Kim. And in the first quarter, there was one thing that was the story. It was the turnovers for Seton Hall, and they have fought to reverse that deficit. Right. They came out of halftime with a vengeance on defense, forcing six Xavier turnovers in the third quarter and holding them to 2 of 11 shooting. So the Pirates, as they've done a lot, this season have turned around their defense and gotten things going on that end of the floor. And it's going to be a tough fourth quarter here for Seton Hall at home. Shadeen Samuels picking up her fourth personal foul in the dying minutes of that third, dying seconds of that third quarter. Desiree Elmore now back on the floor with three personal fouls. On the flip side, Courtney Prenger has three personal fouls, the only one for Xavier in foul trouble. This could be a critical quarter for the final standings in the Big East. We are a little over a week away from tip-off of the Big East Women's Basketball Tournament. Both these teams, a lot of work left to do right now for Seton Hall. The victory, they would move ahead of St. John's in the standings. They'd still be behind Creighton, who right now has a large lead over Villanova, and would move them into a tie with Creighton and Villanova for fourth in the Big East. As Smith rises up for the and one. And Coach Bazella is about four feet onto the court. That was a strong attack by Smith, who only averages about three points per game, and Co Coach Tony Bazella likes her more for her defensive presence. But that time, just finding the back side of that zone, sneaking behind that back line, and a strong attack, able to hang on through the contact. And Smith playing heavy minutes here today, started in the second half, has played 24 minutes so far in this game over the course of the season, just averaging 14 minutes a game. A big three-point shot there. And Wazelson couldn't find the mark. Lauren Wazelson, a huge first half. Only three points so far here in the second half. As Ashley Gomez will check in for Xavier. If you're Coach Moore, what'd you talk about coming into this quarter? What can you do to get back in this game? Well, it was almost a, a flip switch of what Seton Hall was doing in that first quarter. Xavier just had way too many turnovers, and they got sped up in their offense. I thought they settled for some outside jumpers instead of really trying to attack the defense better and get inside. No more swings it to Funis, under 10 to shoot. Lewis hits the three. Alexis Lewis. Finds the mark from downtown. Finally gets one to drop. She had been one for nine before she saw the bottom of the net on that one. A little bit of a sigh of relief for the senior. She still found her point. She's at 19 on the game, leading both Seton Hall and both these teams in individual scoring. Five seconds to shoot now for Xavier. Someone has to get a shot off. Towson in the post. And rising over, Funis gets that one to dribble in. Good patience by the Musketeers working it side to side on that one, as we had just mentioned. Instead of just settling for an outside jumper, they fed it inside for a higher percentage look. 10 point lead, the largest of the game for the Pirates, as Funis is going to get called for three seconds in the key. Tough defense from Ayana Townsend after getting the bucket on the other end. Good job of. Staying vertical and
putting up a wall there, nowhere for Funes to go. So can Xavier work their way back in this with Ariana Gray on the bench with three personal fouls? Where will the scoring come from? It was the redshirt freshman Ayana Towson on the last possession. Prenger, the cross court pass to Gomez. Oselson back into the corner, under 10 to shoot once again. Prenger with the mid range jumper, and it rattles out. Dunham gets the offensive rebound. The point guard swooping in on the weak side. Towson feeds the Pranger and a block by Olish. And it looked like a perfect offensive possession for Xavier, and Olish comes out of nowhere. That was a beautiful read on the high low. The lower player had her defender's seal, but Olesh using her length and mobility, but a good second opportunity created from Aaliyah Dunham with the rebound. Dunham, 32 minutes played already in this game. Just two points. But she has carried the momentum and gets her second basket of the game right on cue. She heard you on that one. She said, I'm coming for you, David. I'm getting my points. Dunham has done a little bit of everything so far in this game as she's done all season for this team, leading them in assists and steals. And a jump ball will mean Xavier basketball. So they get the deficit back into single digits and now they get themselves another possession. And Coach Bazella reacting with a bit of a wild card. Shadeen Samuels, four personal fouls back on the floor here to try and help her team seal what would be a massive win here on the final weekend of the Big East women's basketball regular season. Back to Towson on the post. Towson trying to go up and gets blocked by Alish once again. So it'll be an inbound under the hoop with eight seconds left on the shot clock. We saw Xavier with a very good late clock inbound play earlier this quarter. Oselson back to Dunham. Dunham's gonna have to put up another shot and this one off the back iron. And Wazelson can't keep it in play. Seton Hall. Turning the clamps a little on defense there. Xavier remaining in this zone. 3-2 zone or a 1-2-2 two, two with a lot of pressure up top. Now you want to attack those corners if you're Seton Hall. Smith drives in and will get called for the charge after she let the basketball go. Just the first, second team foul, excuse me, for Seton Hall in this quarter as Wazelson comes on and Sharps comes back in. Sharps a big first quarter with 12 points, has struggled to score the basketball since then. And this is where you need to capitalize. Seton Hall hasn't scored in three minutes. They've had three turnovers, but now you need to put the ball in the basket on the other end. Who will Xavier turn to? Towson back out to Dunham. And a tough shot there. And Park Lane out in the open court to Smith. And Smith lays it in for an easy two. A great decision by Lauren Park Lane. Good recognition by her teammate Jasmine Smith filling that left lane and a perfectly placed pass by the freshman point guard who's really been exceptional in terms of assist to turnover ratio throughout the season. Olish, another big defensive play here. She's got two blocks, and now a steal here in the fourth quarter. Smith gets it down to Samuels. Gray waiting to come back in for Xavier. Smith wide open in front of her own bench. Lewis swoops in for the offensive rebound. 
And Park Lane with the floater, she can't hit it. And Xavier able to recover possession. You can see every member of the Seton Hall bench on their feet, wanting that one, trying to will that one in for Jasmine Smith. And Xavier now struggling to score. And a two and a half minute scoreless run here at the worst time in the fourth quarter. Sharps with three to shoot, gets to her right hand and draws a big foul. And Seton Hall wanted a moving screen there on Towson, their coaching staff furious. But two big free throws coming here for Xavier as we step aside for the final time. These two teams, the final weekend for the Big East women's basketball regular season. Four critical minutes left to play. We'll be back in just a moment here on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching Xavier Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Harford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus. To the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. David Goss and Kim Adams courtside at Walsh Gymnasium for the final four plus minutes of this game. A critical four and a half minutes coming up here because of this. You take a look at the bracket and a lot going on around the league right now, Kim, but both these teams in control of their own destiny to move both up or down the standings on this final weekend. Right, the only thing we know as of now is DePaul locked into that number one seed. We likely that Marquette will stay at number two. But other than that, it's a lot of gridlock going on in the middle there. You mentioned Creighton up big on Villanova right now, potentially moving ahead of them in the standing. So still a lot to figure out in the next two days. Seton Hall came into the night in seventh in the Big East, which would put them in a play-in day game in about a week, but right now, St. John's trailing Butler by one, Seton Hall leading here. So that would push them up the standings into a tie with Creighton and Villanova from fourth to sixth place. Providence leading Georgetown, which could push Xavier into last place in the Big East. And Elmore can't find the mark as Gray returning for the first time here in the fourth quarter. Seton Hall is locked down defensively in the second half. Just four of 20 shooting for the Musketeers. 15 points in total until that shot. But this, a big moment here as Dunham stepping on a foot there and going down. And it may not be on points throughout this game, but Aaliyah Dunham has been massive for everything Xavier has done well here today. And she's definitely their leader on a team that has a new coaching staff, a lot of freshmen and sophomores, only one senior, and Dunham is 
leading this team 35 minutes per game. She'll head to the bench and get that ankle or foot checked out. So Gomez comes on here. Gomez, Sharps, and Wasselson in the backcourt. Lion Decker as well as Gray in the front court for Xavier. That extended 3-2 zone. Trying to push Seton Hall off the perimeter. Park Lane with under 10 to shoot now. And Samuels will be called for the travel. So a six point game and a huge stop there for Xavier as Dunham goes back to the coaching staff and says she's good to go. And Xavier has been able to get the stops. They just haven't been able to convert on the other end as we just mentioned, but this is still a, just a two possession game here. A big opportunity for the Musketeers. Xavier, they led at the end of the first quarter. They led at halftime. They led with 5-10 to play in the third quarter. They have not led since. Trailing by six here. They need a big basket to cut the lead. Lion Decker turning into trouble. Gomez puts the pressure on Lewis, and a jump ball will mean Seton Hall possession. And another body on the ground here. This time it's Wasselson. For Xavier, who just saw Dunham forced to check out. Lion Decker there turning into traffic. We said it, this is our first game in over a month. There's a cluster of bodies there in the lane as Wasselson went down. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in just a moment from Walsh Gymnasium. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. So, Lauren Wasselson heading over to the bench to be looked at. Xavier bringing Kari Goss in, Gross in. And they will look to try and get over the line here. Trailing by six on the road, Smith once again. What a day here for Jasmine Smith as she is now in double digits. She's really been able to find some gaps in that zone and attack off the bounce. She's not a great outside shooter, but she's been able to use her speed to get inside. And Shadeen Samuels is done for the game on a foul against her in transition. And there was some some contact there. Again, we Samuels. do not have access to replays today, so we can't take another look at it, but I did notice a little bit of an extension of that elbow Samuels. running down the left lane. Kind of like a quarterback on the end around trying to... Stiff armor. Yeah, <laughs> protect Lewis a little bit. And Samuels had taken a risk on defense just a moment ago and sort of stepped off at the last second, realizing she had four fouls. Wasn't able to recognize there quick enough. So the Big East preseason player of the year is on the bench for the remainder of this game. Can Xavier use it to their advantage? A big shot by Sharps. And the Musketeers are back within six with two minutes left to play here in South Orange. The penultimate game of the Big East regular season. The feed from Elmore and Alish with a huge shot for Seton Hall. Her sixth point of the game. And Kim, that one could be the one that broke Xavier's back. I have been so impressed by Desiree Elmore and the number of different things that she has done well in this game. It's, it's not always scoring. She's been rebounding. She's been diving on the floor for 50-50 balls and that time just incredible vision from a couple steps out past the three-point line and able to find Alexia Alesh who did a good job of finding a gap in that zone but Desiree Elmore has really put together a complete game she has 10 points six rebounds and three assists so far in this one but she's made impactful plays doing it without her front court partner and Shadeen Samuels 
for the rest of the road if you're Xavier. We've got two timeouts left, but a little stoppage there. What was the message to the team? What are you trying to do in these offensive possessions? Well, they have to know exactly what set they're running here. Everyone has to be setting good screens, know where they're supposed to be. Gray with double teams on her, and she works right through it. And now a full court press here from Dunham. And that was just easy money there for them. Just fed it into the beast. She had a size advantage. Nice job of staying controlled on her finish on that one. Coach Moore wanted Xavier to press. Dunham was the only one in the front court. And Dunham called for the foul here. It's the third team foul for Xavier. And that's just a, a killer because it, it resets the clock. And they are gonna, you know, they're starting to look at time and score here. That's the third Xavier foul if it gets to a situation where they need to foul at the end of the game. They still need two more, so they might be taking that, but that just is a killer to reset the clock there. So 20 seconds on the shot clock. Lewis able to finally get it in. Ullish double teamed, a jump ball. It'll be Xavier basketball. They trap the center along the sideline. Alash not able to do anything about it. And so Xavier now a chance to cut this lead to four, maybe even three points here in this possession. And I do the same thing they just did. I would feed it inside to Gray, but she has to know that there's gonna be a double coming. Gray immediately goes to her right hand and gets called for the offensive foul. We mentioned Desiree Elmore doing a little bit of everything on the floor. That is not the first chart she's drawn tonight. Gray has been predictable going to her right side, basically any time she puts it on the floor and Elmore getting right on that right side and anticipating it. Desiree Elmore, another game-changing play. Elmore had to get it right. She's sitting on four personal fouls as she helps Park Lane break the press. And after that offensive foul now, this will be the fifth team foul for Xavier. So Elmore will go to the line where she is a perfect four of four so far in this game and try and help her team ice it. Now a reminder, Seton Hall led in the final minute last week against St. John's. And we're not able to close it out losing on a set of free throws in the final eight seconds of that game. Yeah, that was a crazy ending a game where they had jumped out to a 24 to 10 lead at the first quarter and a questionable ending to that one. But that's a, a, a game that really impacted their standings. Elmore goes one for two. A seven point deficit here for Xavier. Dunham able to recover the basketball, misses the layup and forced into the foul on Elmore. It's a tough break for the junior point guard, Aaliyah Dunham on that one. She had done a nice job of getting that broken play back into her hands and then just misses a point blank layup. And for Xavier, they hit five threes in the first half. Only one three here in the second half. They started out the game knocking it down from deep. It put pressure on Seton Hall. They haven't been able to find that here in the second half. And another missed free throw for Elmore. It might not be absolutely necessary in this one, but these are things you want to have sharp and tightened up as you get ready to head to the Big East tournament next week. You got to be converting free throws late in the game. So a timeout here for Xavier to draw up a play down eight. Do you go for the three here, or do you go quick two? I would set up a quick two, because you're going to have to get three scores regardless. I would either get it, I would get it to Gray, but I'd get it to her right on the block, because right now I don't trust her on the elbow. She's she's turned it over a bunch on the dribble. She's gotten offensive fouls. I would set an, an easy look up for her, just feed it into her in the post, which they did about two possessions a go, but everyone else has to be ready to catch and shoot because she's gonna draw a double or a triple team on the catch. You have to think Sharps will be one of those sitting on the perimeter. She's been the best three-point shooter in this game. Wasselson back on the floor as well. 
She's had some success from deep, two of six from behind the three-point arc. It'll be Towson, Gomez, and Gray alongside those two. So Dunham off the floor. Smith, Elmore, Park Lane, Alish, and Lewis. They try and go down low to Towson and turned over. Lewis helping defensively. And Park Lane now trying to dribble out of the backcourt. She'll get fouled with 31 seconds to go and a chance now if she can knock these down to probably ice this one for Seton Hall. So Coach Moore tried to go down low. She tried maybe use a little misdirection, get it down low to Towson. Unsuccessfully. And that's been the story of this second half. It was Seton Hall turnovers in the first half. It's been Xavier turnovers here in the second half. And it's been an improved Seton Hall defense in the second half, and they defended that last play well with three players surrounding Townsend who attempted to catch. 12 turnovers in the second half for Xavier. And they have struggled to put up points here. Just 21 points in the second half after exploding for 36 in the first half. And now a 10 point lead here for Seton Hall to close it out. And we have to say once again, to close it out without Janine Samuels available has been big emotionally probably and mentally for the Seton Hall group. Yeah, I think we've seen Desiree Elmore really step up without Samuels on the floor and, and put the team on her back. And we've talked about different plays she's made. She hasn't just scored the ball, but she's drawn charges. She's gone after rebound. She's been diving for loose balls. She's a player that has really taken her game to another level in the absence of Samuels. Savior here. You'd expect to see them try and get a three off this time. Down 10 with 31 seconds to go. They tried to feed it straight into the post off the inbound on the last possession and were not able to get it in. Yeah, this time you absolutely want to go for the three in a two possession game. Dunham is their best shooter percentage wise, but she's actually on the bench. It'll be Sharps here. Wasselson coming off the curl. Can't get the three away. Gray rises and shoots. It's an air ball. Lewis will take it down in that. Should be it for Seton Hall. A 10 point lead as they go to the line here. And Kim, a big win for Seton Hall. But first, for Xavier, Coach Moore talked about them improving, playing harder, playing smarter. You saw that again here today, just not enough to get over the line on the road. Right, I mean, you see the glimpses. Certainly, their level of how hard they play is not in question because to, to have a, a three and 24 record and continue to come out and play with such intensity is, is not easy. So you have to really applaud them for that. And they're definitely going to continue building on this rest of the season and into next season. Kickball going against Park Lane here. Seton Hall, their largest lead of the game at 12 points. And right now, over in Queens, Butler leading St. John's by three as Creighton's already sealed the victory over Villanova. So if Butler can hold on, Seton Hall will move to sixth in the Big East with this win here today. And it will move them out of a first round Big East women's basketball game and it will clinch them a berth in the quarterfinals if they can hang on on Sunday. But of course, Still, everything could change. Yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll then have to welcome in a tough Butler team on Sunday for the season finale, a Butler team that has exceeded expectations this season. And a Butler team still with something to play for, a shot at second place, looking to maintain third place as well. But for Seton Hall, it wasn't easy. But it's job done, Kim. They come out slow, they struggle offensively, and they're able to seal a double-digit victory. And a lot of it was the second half defense. Just 23 points for Xavier in the second half. 
28% shooting in the second half for the Musketeers. Seton Hall got it done on that end of the floor. The Pirates move to 17 and 11, 10 and 7 in Big East play. And we'll be back in just a moment to chat with leading scorer Alexis Lewis here on the Big East Digital Network. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. The Big East Way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Welcome back here on the Big East Digital Network. David Goss and Kim Adams joined by the superstar of today, Alexis Lewis. Alexis, 21 points, but it wasn't from behind the arc like normal. You started to go inside and score. Is that something you recognize yourself or was it something the coaching staff talked to you about? Um, it's both. I mean, when I realize my shots aren't falling, I can say, hey, coach, can you put me on the inside? Or we're also interchangeable as three, four, fives. So I can just say, hey, Shadeen, go out on the wing, let me get inside. So no matter what, I can play inside, outside because we're all interchangeable. Alexis, there was a noticeable difference, we thought, defensively in your team from the first half to the second, holding Xavier to just 28% shooting in the final 20 minutes. What do you attribute that change to? I mean, understanding that our offense doesn't run well unless our defense is. In the first half, the game was close the entire time because defensively we weren't locked in and we were letting them get comfortable and do whatever they wanted. Halftime, we said we have to lock them down defensively and that'll get everything else rolling and it absolutely did. You guys came into this one coming off of two straight losses, including a really, really heartbreaking one against St. John's. What does this win and this, this weekend in general do for you guys as you get ready to head to the tournament next week? I mean, even from that loss, we just say take it one game, one game at a time. We know we didn't lose that game in the last possession. We lost it in the second quarter when we lost our 15-point lead. We lost it in the fourth quarter when, you know, we missed the box out. So we have to understand that the little things like that matter in every quarter, not just at the end of the game. Sunday, your final game here at Walsh Gymnasium, at least in regular season play what's that experience going to be, be like what are you looking forward to against Butler uh, it's going to be absolutely amazing I mean I know us as seniors me Shadeen and Barbara we want to come out and make sure we give this crowd a reason to remember us um, as the seniors we are we work hard we love this university we want to make sure we go out with a good win well 21 points tonight so you're halfway there for the week and congratu congratulations on the win and enjoy, enjoy, <laughs> thank you. enjoy the post game Chipotle. Thank you. Kim will thank just you. eat the sour cream. You don't even have to give her the full <laughs> no, meal. 
for Kim Adams, myself, David Goss, our producer, Dagan Hughes. Thanks so much for watching tonight. Seton Hall locks down the victory and moves to 10-7 and 7 in Big East play. Have a great night, everybody.